Hello and welcome to the Managing Uncertainty Podcast. I'm Brian Strausser, Principal and Chief Executive here at BrightPath. In this week's episode, I want to talk about some consistent opportunities that we have seen in crisis management and business continuity exercises this year. Here at BrightPath, over the last several weeks, we've conducted nearly half a dozen exercises on behalf of our clients. And even though every client has some specific strengths and opportunities, there have been some consistent themes that we've seen in terms of opportunities to improve when it comes to crisis management, business continuity, and emergency management processes. So I want to talk a little bit about what those consistent themes have looked like through the course of the year. The first one is around communication and notification processes, that you need to have a clear way of sending notifications and obtaining responses and what those expectations are. And in the moment, you need to be able to do that very quickly with whatever emergency mass notification system that you're using. You might be using something like OnSolve or SendWordNow or EverBridge or Alert Media, but you need to be able to send those communications and have a clear understanding, having trained your team on what we want them to do and what you should expect from them in that response. The second is around documentation. And what I mean by this is that your team, your crisis management team, understands where to find copies of your plans and other reference material, tools, meeting agendas, templates that they're going to use. There's a lot of easy ways to do this using SharePoint or OneDrive or Notion or Slack or some other type of collaborative chat document collaboration system or even Microsoft Teams for that matter. But have a way of doing it and make sure that your team understands how that's going to work. Number three is around stakeholder management. That you need to have a clear understanding of the audiences to which you're gonna communicate and the roles of those stakeholders, executives, and leaders in the response. And what is the order of communication that needs to happen? For example, you don't wanna send communication out to the public without making sure your employees are aware of it at at least the same time or if possible earlier. There are, of course, some regulatory aspects of that as well. The next one is around proactive response planning, that teams need to be more reactive, more proactive rather, than be reactive. What we're looking for here is that teams are able to get ahead of what's going on rather than just reacting to what is happening. And that's where the value in preparation and preparedness comes into play. The next is around information sharing that we have broad opportunities to share more information and intelligence and collaborate with key partners and vendors during a response. What we see in a lot of organizations is a lot of this key information that's being obtained through public-private partnerships, for example, is really siloed within one part of the organization, whether that's your global security, corporate security team, or your information security team, or another group, and it's not being shared across the organization in a way where they are able to take action with that. The next is around just ownership of documentation, who owns various plans uh, and checklists and material and keeps those up to date and available for your team. The next is just around improvements in business continuity planning that we see gaps, uh, particularly when it comes to partner and vendor business continuity and disaster recovery plans. As your internal program matures, I would encourage you to take a look at third-party resilience efforts and where your vendors play a key role in supporting your organization. How can they recover their capabilities to continue to support you? And then lastly is just role clarity. What is the definition or how do we define roles and responsibilities during an incident, particularly regarding information sharing and decision-making authority? It's the classic question of whose job is it to do what, whose job is it to lead, whose job is it to document, whose job is it to communicate, but all of those play a role in having a clear and effective response. So those are some areas of opportunity that we've seen during the course of the year with several dozen exercises that we've completed with our clients. That's it for this edition of the Managing Uncertainty Podcast. We'll be back next week with another new episode. Be well. Thanks for watching our video. To learn more about how to manage uncertainty and disruption in your organization, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe to our video channel. 
And here are a few more videos that we've selected that will help you learn more about business continuity, crisis management, and crisis communications.